Fest is wonderful. And my clicker's not working. Yay for me. Lord Jesus, show me what you want me to know. And Jesus, show me what you want me to do. And Jesus, show me what you want me to stop doing. I will be a doer of your word, not just a hearer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I feel kind of like on the Johnny Carson show. Chris, come on down. Can I get a clap on it? That was like Johnny Carson. <laughs> Well, well, church, I hope you're happy. I hope everything's going good today. I'm glad to see you here, and there is a lot of people here today, and wow, I just got to get through this. No, I'm just kidding. How are y'all? Everybody good? All right. Well, I always like to, I didn't tell a joke in the first service, but I just remembered one as I was walking down the Johnny Carson thing, and uh, I remember one, and I thought, wow, I, I've heard about this rich man. He was a rich man, and he liked to do big eccentric parties at his house. He liked to do big eccentric things and so he called all of his friends one day and they was all out partying in the backyard you know and they got up to the, everybody sitting around this pool well this man he had in his pool there he had sharks and he had alligators he had deadly snakes and he had piranhas and he had everything and so he got everybody sitting around the pool uh that evening and he said all right he's on a microphone and he said okay he said everybody hear me and they're like yeah he said, if anybody will jump in this pool and swim across this pool, he said, I'll give them whatever they want. And so everybody's like, are you crazy? That ain't happening. And so he's never had a taker on this. So he knew that wasn't going to happen. So he turns around about that time, he hears a splash. And he looks, and this old boy is in the middle of that pool. And, I mean, he's giving it everything he's got. He's dodging piranhas and, 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 and snakes and sharks and alligators. And he gets the whole way to the other end and jumps out and says, Oh, my gosh. Oh. And that guy walked over. He was so amazed. That rich man walked over. He was so amazed. He said, Oh, my gosh, buddy. He said, I have never in all the history of me throwing parties at my house ever had anybody do that. He goes, what do you want? He said, I owe you. What do you want? And that guy grabbed my phone. He said, I want the phone number or the name of the person that pushed me in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, wouldn't you want that? <laughs> well, guys, I, uh, I'm Big Chris. Uh, if it's your first time here, uh, that's what they call me. And so uh, Jim and his wife is out in um, Phoenix. And they're seeing their son RJ. Their son RJ is uh, not not he's not bad or nothing. He's his he's got diabetes, and so it kind of regulates up and down sometimes. And so they come out there to check on him. So that's where they're at. So I want to talk to you today about being a good example. Every one of us has every one of us has in us a ministry. You may not be in a pulpit like this. Really, your pulpit is your life. People are watching how you live. How do you respond to adversity? How consistent you are and how you treat people around you. Our actions speak louder than our words. And we are called to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. That means the way we live should make people want what we have. So much joy, so much peace. We should be so kind, so generous, so good-natured that it draws people to us. One of the best ways to go out and make your light shine is to go out and just be happy. Be friendly. Be good to people. Have a positive attitude. I heard someone say one time, Preach all the time. Use words if necessary. The way you carry your life is speaking to people. Where everybody's uh, we're speaking to people. Maybe you work in an office where everybody's complaining. They're talking about the boss, criticizing the company. But you go in with a good attitude. You have a smile on your face. You're grateful at least you have a job. You're focused on what's right, not what's wrong. You know what? You just ministered to those people. 
You just spoke into their lives. And the fact is, you didn't have to say a word. You didn't have to condemn them and say, you old ungrateful thing, you. No, you just let your light shine. You let your actions do the talking. That is the most powerful way to influence people. We have to realize that every one of us has a ministry in us. You may not know how to preach, but you do know how to smile. That's a great sermon. I've got that one down. I smile all the time, right? You may not be able to get up here, but you can be kind to someone. You can give an encouraging word. You can be stable in the midst of your adversity. All these things send a message to people. We are supposed to be living epistles read by all men. That means people ain't reading a book these days. They're reading your lives. They're watching the way we live. And I wonder what would happen if we would all go out each day with a smile on our face. Being good to people. Kind. Courteous. Respectful. Friendly. That would probably have a great impact. Further than any sermon could ever speak. The scripture says here in Corinthians 5 verse 20, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. We are ambassadors of, the Christ, of Christ, God's personal representatives on earth. People got to understand that people don't see God all the time. They see you. They see us. We need to ask ourselves, are we representing God in a way I should? Am I kind? Am I friendly? Do I draw people to me or do I push them away? I'm reminded about some of our customers that come down at my work. They come in so happy sometimes, so joyful me and Miss Pat sometimes can't wait till they come back. Mr. Barty. That's the way we should be. A joy to be around. Consistently happy. Consistently friendly. But some people, it's sad to say, you can't wait until they leave. <laughs> they always have a problem. They're always discouraged. They always have a sad story. They're draining your energy. And of course, that's fine sometimes, but not all the time. If we mope around with no joy and no enthusiasm, no one's going to want what we got. And the reason some people don't come to church today or even want to serve God is because they've seen some believers that look like they've lost their last friend. The Bible tells us to be sober-minded, not sober-faced. we got to get the joy from down here up to here. Like that bumper sticker I saw a while back. If you're born again, notify your face. <laughs> All right? But people today, they see so many different signals that they think they got to go to church every week. They honor God with their life. But they're just down and depressed as I am. Or when they have an adversity, they get just as stressed out and upset as I do. Why in the world would I want what they had? No. People should be envious of us. They should see so much stability, so much peace, so much victory. Like a magnet, it draws them in. After all... After all, God has done for us. Amen? Amen? The least we could do is go out each day and put a smile on our face. We are supposed to be the light of the world. And I believe the smile is the switch that turns the bulb on. It starts right here, but it's a poor representation just to go around looking down and defeated. And the fact is, we all have challenges... We all find a reason to be unhappy. I'm sorry, we can all find a reason to be unhappy, 
but we don't have a right to be unhappy. We represent the Almighty God. And I know I have people that represent me. They do, they, they do th doing things on my behalf. And if they went out negative, they went out sour and complaining, they look sloppy, beat up, run down, I would say, you know what? I would ask you to do something else because I don't want to be represented that way. How much more our Heavenly Father? And sure, there are days not all of us feel like being friendly. We don't feel like having a good attitude. We don't feel like smiling. But we need to remind ourselves, I'm preaching a sermon today with my life. What kind of message am I sending? What kind of message are people being influenced by the way I live? I may not speak any words that are wrong, but what am I expressing with my body language? Am I pleasant to be around? Am I happy? Am I good-natured? Or do people feel pressured around me when I walk in the room? Maybe uptight and stressed. Maybe people can feel that coming off of me. I was in a department store the other day, and I went up to the counter to pay and there were several lanes open and I just chose the one closest to me and so when I handed the man my product he seemed to be perturbed kind of aggravated that I had chosen him you know me you know old big Chris oh happy go lucky oh hi, hi buddy how are you doing right I just smiled at him you know and I said hi how you doing he didn't say a word back at me. Totally ignored me. Acted like I was bothering him. I could feel the tension and the pressure around him coming off of him, right? Well, it came time to pay, and I handed him my credit card, and he looked at it kind of close, and he read. then when he read my name, he looked back up, and he said, Wait a minute. Ain't you one of them pastors of that church down there? By the way he said it, I didn't know if I was going to be a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> I smiled and said, yes, I am. He said, that's funny. My wife and I watch Jim sometimes on Sunday. I wanted to say, do you ever listen? <laughs> but I didn't. I bought my product there and was just leaving out from, from there, just being friendly as I could be. And I said, well... Just come and see us whenever you can. He said, Chris, I would love to, but I'm in charge of the greeting committee at my church. I thought, wow, really? <laughs> okay. That may not have... So, greeting committee at my church. I thought, wow, really? Well, okay then. That man may not have realized it. He was preaching a sermon. Hate to say it, but it wasn't a really good one. Sometimes it does more damage than good to say they love God and say, I'm a believer. And then they go out and treat people like that. That just keeps people from really wanting to know God. After all, if we are hard to get along with or we are unfriendly, people are not going to want what we have. How is that possibly going to draw anybody in? Let's pay attention to what kind of message we are sending out. I love one of our members. I love what one of our members told me a while back. She was out shopping. This was at Family Dollar. She was out shopping and she went up to the counter to pay. And the girl at the register saw her, how happy she was. She said a, she said she had a smile on her face, and she was just radiating with joy and peace. You see, people that have a glow about them, right? They have a glow about them. And that's what this lady looked like. And the clerk, just in passing, said, How you doing? And the lady said, she said, I'm blessed, and I believe this year is going to be the best year so far. That clerk looked at her and said, Wait a minute, do you go down there to Wild Church? She said, yeah, I do. The clerk said, I should have known that everyone that comes in here says that down there at Wild Church. <laughs> Give yourselves a clap on that one. Yeah. I thought, what a great testimony that was, right? 
That's the way it should be. Some of you didn't think you had a ministry, but you all have a powerful ministry. You can impact people that I never could or Jim never could. You're preaching a sermon every day with your life. One of the best sermons you could ever preach is just go out and be happy. Be good to people. Let your love of God shine through you everywhere you go. It's funny sometimes. When you smile a lot, people get suspicious of you sometimes, right? They look at you and say, what's wrong with him? Why does he look so happy over there? My attitude is make them look suspicious. I smile at everybody. Sometimes, see people looking, they may be thinking, that guy, he's on drugs or something. He may, he may look kind of high. You know what? I have to admit it. I'm guilty. I'm on the most high. Amen. I'm excited about life. I'm happy. I know our best days are not behind us. They are in front of us. And if we're going to represent God, we should do it with joy, with enthusiasm, with honor, with excellence. With ministry, it's inter with integrity, I'm sorry. It's interesting that studies suggest that people remember less than 10% of what they say. But what they always remember is what they feel. In other words, you can say the right thing with a sour attitude and they will go away remembering the negative. But if you can just be happy and have a smile and be kind, take time for people, that's what makes a positive impact in people's lives. People tell me sometimes, Chris, I can't always remember your sermon was about, but what ministered to me was the passion you had up there, man. The joy in your face, the compassion, the sincerity. That's what the phrase means, preach at all time, use words only if necessary. Pay attention to your body language, your voice tones, your facial expressions. Have a pleasant demeanor, and when somebody does something for you at the store or at the office or at the mall, don't just take the receipt and walk away. Look at them in the eye and say thank you. We can't get so busy and so preoccupied that we're not taking time for people. Slow down and show them that you care. You're not just saying thank you, that's a part of your ministry. How do you know there's not, they're not needing something positive sold in their lives? They may be going, to, they may be going through all kinds of difficulty. You know, nothing about one kind word, one heart-filled gesture, one loving concern can help them get through their day. I saw a video here a while back. I loved it. It was really good. It was a teacher. She had a, a room full of kids. And she, had, she, she made them all blow up these balloons. She had about 80 kids in her room. It was a pretty big, big, pretty big school. And she, she got all these balloons all blowed up and everything. All the kids did, and they tied them on. And she said, okay, now put your name, each one of you put your name on each side of these balloons. And so they did. And she said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get all these balloons, and we're going to toss them out in the hall, the hall here. And he says, and we're going to give you, she says, we're going to give you five minutes. She says, y'all run out there and see who in the world can find their, their balloon. And so the kids were just so happy. They're excited, you know. So they run up there, and they throw them all out there, and she starts the clock. Well, four minutes go by. They're still out there running around. Five minutes go by. She goes, I'll give them an extra minute. Another minute or two goes by, and she said, okay, stop. Not anybody found their balloon. Not one kid found the name of the balloon. So they gathered all the balloons back up and uh, brought them back in the room, and she sat down. She goes, you know what? We're going to try something else. She says, we're going to take, and she says, we're going to throw them balloons back out in the hall there. But this time, if you find one and it has a name on it, take that balloon to the person it belongs to. So the kids were like, okay. And so they get up and they're, they run out. And within three minutes, every kid in there had found their balloon. 
You know what, guys? If you go out in life and you're trying to find your own happiness, you will never find it. But if you will help somebody else find theirs, God will sow a seed in your life. Amen? Amen. We're not... So when you go out during your day, be more aware of people around you. You're not just going to work. That's your place of ministry. Or going to the grocery store. Or going to the school. Or the gas station. God is directing your steps. God is constantly bringing people across your path that need what you have. Make sure you are sowing good seeds into them. When people are around you, they should feel hope, feel love, feel encouragement. You may not say anything, but with your demeanor, with a smile on your face, with the glow that God has put around you, it can communicate even more than words. You may work at some places where everyone's got a bad attitude. They're negative. But you don't have to let them pull you down. I heard somebody once say, you could be a thermometer. Or you could be a thermostat. A thermometer just measures the temperature <coughs> of the room and adjusts to that. That means if everyone is sour, negative, complaining, you sink down to their level. But a better choice is to be a thermostat. A thermostat changes the temperature in the room. You go in with a good attitude, excited about your future, full of hope, little by little that environment will change. Now, I believe today I'm looking at a bunch of thermostats in here. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. There's already enough thermometers out here in the world. There's already enough people that just goes with majority. But don't let them influence you. Go and influence them. Bring them up to your level. And you don't have to straighten everyone out. The Bible says God has given us the power to be a witness. Doesn't necessarily mean we have to witness, although it is great to share your faith. But one of the best ways to witness is just be who you are. Just live your life consistently happy, consistently friendly, consistently in a good mood. Let your actions do the talking. I remember one time I was needed a computer cord to my uh, computer, and it, it went out. We had a storm, and I had to get a computer. The the two computer uh, uh, thing uh, monitors at the at work blew up and burnt down, and we had a storm. It was crazy. Well, anyway, I got the monitors, but there wasn't a cord in it. I bought this monitor, didn't have a cord. And so I remember where I had bought a cord for that same monitor before at Staples. So I'd called up there to see, you know, whatever. Nobody answered the phone. So I said, Miss Pat, I'll be right back. I go go to Staples. So I get up there to, to Staples, and I go inside, and I look for a little bit, and then I could not find the cord. I just couldn't, you know, sometimes you just can't find it, right? And so <clears throat> I walk up to this guy, and uh, uh, he's on the phone with some guy, and you can tell he's a little bit irritable or whatever. But anyway, he got off the phone, and he said, yeah, what, what, what's up? I said, well, I'm looking for this cord, man. And he just glanced at me and goes, we don't sell that here. Okay. Well, sir, sir, I bought it here before I bought it here. I said we don't sell that here. I said, okay, but I did. I don't make me repeat it. And you know what? Don't even call up here. I know you called up here. Are you kidding me? You know what I wanted to do? I, I wanted to say, I'll call up here when I want to. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. I said, God, I need you today bad. <laughs> bad. I said, okay, buddy. And so I just walked away. I went over there, and sure enough, about 20 minutes later, I find the cord. Oh, you don't know how bad I want to take that cord up and go, See? <laughs> I did not. Okay? I stood in line. The guy comes walking uh, o over there, and I got to kind of, he kind of, I guess he calmed down. I don't know. He calmed down a little bit. Anyway, he got, I was standing in line. I got to talking with him, and I asked, How long have you been working here, man? And he said, This is my first day. <laughs> he said, You know what? I think I'm catching on pretty good. 
I just kept telling myself, you just keep calling it by faith, brother. You just keep calling it by faith. <laughs> but you never really know who's watching you. Now, you might say, Chris, wait a minute. You're the associate pastor down there at Wow Church. You've got to act right. That's all the way there is, Bubba. Let me tell you something. Don't kid yourself. Your kids may be watching you. Your neighbors. Your friends. You're preaching a sermon with everyone around you. You come in contact with. They may not remember what you say sometimes, but they will remember what they felt. Do they feel the love? Do they feel the joy? Do they feel the approval? We need to be sending out the right things. We are representing the Almighty God. You know, it's like the poem. There's a poem I heard here a while back, a long time ago. It went like this. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather men walk with me than merely show me the way. What kind of a sermon are we sharing with people every day? Just little things like being kind to the little lady at the grocery store. You just ministered to her. Being friendly to that co-worker at, at the office. You just made a deposit in his life. Or taking that neighbor some food that didn't hasn't been feeling well. That's a ministry. And Scripture tells us that we are temples of the Almighty God. In another way, you're called, you could say we are containers filled with God. Anywhere we go, we should be dispensing good on somebody, dispensing hope, dispensing encouragement, dispensing joy. You may be having some difficulties in your own life, but the best thing you can do is get your mind off yourself. Amen. Don't, ha don't live ingrown. Be a giver. Make up your mind and tell yourself, I'm going to make a difference in this world today. I'm going to smile at people. I'm going to be friendly. I'm going to encourage someone. You might say, Chris, now hold up. Now hold up. I need some encouraging myself. What about... No. If you will sow a seed, and if you will start encouraging others, God will surely make you also be encouraged. Amen. In our times of difficulty, the most powerful things we can do sometimes is be a blessing. To someone else. Don't sit around and be waiting for your ship to come in. Some of you haven't even shipped a sent, a, a sent a ship out yet. You need to start being an encourager. Start being hope. Start sharing your love, your joy with others. The fact is, every one of us is dispensing something. Too many go around dispensing negative things. Defeat. Sarcasm. Self-pity. Pride. They don't even have to say a word, but you can feel these things coming off of them. Please don't let that be you. Go out each day dispensing joy, dispensing enthusiasm. Be friendly. Let your light shine. Let it shine. There's always enough sour people in our society. Our lives should overflow with victory. God has given us, if we were going to let our light shine, we're going to have to turn the bulb on. Let's be full of joy wherever we go. Too often we think we can only preach with our words. We think we've got to go out and straighten everybody up. Let me tell you what you're doing wrong. No, most of the time, that just makes people defensive. My buddy used to tell me, don't be a fire hose and try to knock people down. Point out their faults, their shortcomings. Instead, be a sprinkler. Share hope. Share a kind word. Share encouragement. Let your life be an example. See, we all have a pulpit. You're ministering to people all around you. Your life is sending a message. Being a good example is what opens the door to a person's heart. The, this, I love this. This one young man was really struggling. He had a lot of addictions, and he had a lot of anger built up with the way his life was and the way it was been. He had a lot of problems. He was the least likely one that you would think would ever have anything to do with the things of God. 
He asked me one day if I would start praying for him, if I would start helping him out. A lot of people have gone in and said, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, right. Here's what you're doing wrong. You got to straighten up and live right. Do this and do that. But I found most people already know what they're doing wrong. They don't need our condemnation. They need our love. They need us to be understanding. Some people, they say us do one thing wrong and come at you like a bulldog. Let me straighten you out. I'm going to tell you something, brother. You're going straight to hell. It's funny sometimes. It seems they're glad that we're going. But we are supposed to share God's news. We have the power to be a witness. You don't have to straighten everyone out. Let your light shine. In fact, the scripture talks about wives that have husbands that are not serving God. It says don't try to win them over with your words. Don't try to convince them with your speech. Let your life of excellence and integrity speak to them. I know of too many ladies' husbands not coming to church. They harp on that man night and day constantly preaching to him, quoting him scriptures, telling what he's doing wrong, most of the time that drives people further away. A better approach is just let your light shine. Be fun to be around. Be good-natured. Make him want what you have. Amen? I started praying with that man that was addicted on drugs. I started praying with him. And we would meet at my work. He'd come up to my work sometimes. He didn't even come from the same faith. But I would encourage him and give him hope. One day he showed up here at Wild Church on a Wednesday night. He told me, Chris, I have never felt anything like this before. It was the love of God. I still see him from time to time. His job has him going all over the place. But you can tell he's no longer addicted. Today he will tell you he's been set free. He's living a new life, letting his light shine, being a good example. How did this happen? Not by me forcing it, not by me condemning him. No, I just simply let my light shine. That's what I'm asking you to do today, every one of you. I'm asking you to do this today. The same thing. You have a ministry. Every one of you has a ministry in you. You also represent the Almighty God. When you go out in the morning, make sure you have a smile on your face. Make sure you're friendly and have a pleasant demeanor. Remember, people don't see God all the time. They see us. I wonder what would happen if every one of us would go out of here dispensing good on somebody. Joy, hope, and encouragement. Friends, you are the container that is filled with God. Don't keep it for yourself. Share it with others. Let your light shine. If you will go out each day and be a good example, you will not only make a positive impact in other people's lives, But here's the beauty. God will use that seed to impact you in your own life. He will cause you to come up higher. He will show you more of his blessings and favor. And you will live the life of victory that is in store. store. Do you receive this message today? Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming.